Hey guys, it's Tessa from HandleTheHeat.com where I like to share sweet treats with a sprinkling of baking science. And today I'm going to be showing you how to knead bread dough by hand. This is really important because how you knead your bread dough can actually make or break your bread. So today's video is sponsored by Red Star Yeast, my favorite brand of baker's yeast. And if you're interested in more tips, tricks, tutorials and skills in how to actually bake bread from scratch, be sure to head over to their website, redstaryeast.com, for tons more articles and helpful resources. So before we dive into me showing you exactly how I like to knead dough by hand, let's talk quickly about what exactly kneading does and why it's so important. Kneading is basically the process of working the dough into a smooth ball to create those strands of gluten that actually act as the structural backbone to your favorite bread recipes. Now, gluten is actually formed when the protein content in whatever flour you're using is mixed with moisture and then physically combined or most of all kneaded into a nice smooth dough. This process really forms the entire structure of the dough, which allows it to rise and hold its shape into beautiful loaves when they're done baking. So a question I get asked about a lot is, when you're following a bread recipe, if it tells you to knead the dough in a stand mixer with a dough hook, can you do that by hand instead? The answer is almost always yes. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you exactly how I like to knead bread dough by hand, but I just wanted to quickly say that the technique I'm going to show you can pretty much be used for any bread recipe. Just make sure you're following the specific steps and visual indications the recipe you're using calls for. So I'm just going to be doing a super simple dough recipe to demonstrate kneading for you today. What I like to do is start with about half of the flour that the recipe calls for in my mixing bowl. And no matter what recipe I'm following, I always prefer to actually weigh my ingredients with a digital kitchen scale because it's so much more accurate than weighing by dry measuring cups and it will eliminate so many baking problems and frustrations that you might be experiencing if you weigh your ingredients. So I'll link to a scale down below, but I have half my flour in my mixing bowl. And next up, I'm going to add a little bit of granulated sugar. And then I'm going to be using instant yeast today because it's so quick and easy. You just toss it in with the rest of your dry ingredients, no proofing required. However, you can pretty much always use active dry yeast um, and instant yeast interchangeably. I'll leave more details down below if you have questions about that. So I'll be adding in my instant yeast. Now I like to give this a quick stir before I add in my salt. And then lastly, I'm going to start adding in my warm water. Now you wanna use water that is about 125 degrees. If it's too hot for you to bear to touch, then it's going to be way too hot for your yeast. It will actually kill your yeast if it's too hot. If it's too cold, it will take longer for your dough to rise, but you definitely wanna have a nice, warm, lukewarm temperature to your water. Now I'm gonna give this a quick stir and then start to gradually add in the rest of my flour. And now what's really important when you're following any bread baking recipe is to pay attention to how the dough is looking for you. You should really think of the recipe like a set of guidelines. They're basically showing you an idea of what to add in, what to expect, but you really need to be customizing how the bread is looking for your kitchen environment. If it's really humid where you live, if you're using a different brand of flour, all of these little variables can really impact your bread baking. So you may need to add a little bit less flour than the recipe calls for, or maybe a little bit more. You might need to knead longer than the recipe says, or less time depending on how strong you are, how um, great your kneading skills are. There are so many variables. So just really treat every instance that you're making bread as its own little experiment and follow the visual indications given by the recipe first and foremost. All right, so once the dough starts to come together into kind of a shaggy mass like this, we're actually going to move the dough out of the bowl and onto a floured work surface to really start kneading it. All right, so I'm basically just going to start working the dough with both my hands and you can kind of see the motion that I'm using. Now, the technique you use or how you like to work with the dough isn't the biggest deal. I like to do it like this, where I'm kind of using both my palms 
to press into the dough and then turn it around, turn it over, keep it moving, and then see how it's starting to stick a little bit. It's getting a little bit tacky. So I'm just going to add some more flour and I'm only taking flour from the original amount the recipe calls for and adding that in. I want to avoid adding too much excess flour more than the recipe calls for because what that ends up doing is creating a really dense or dry loaf of bread, which we definitely don't want. Now, when I'm working with bread, I typically like to use bread flour or at least half bread flour, half all-purpose flour because bread flour has a higher level of protein content. And that protein is going to help create a stronger uh, dough that's easier to work with, that rises nice and tall, and really just creates a beautiful loaf. So if you haven't experimented with bread flour already, I definitely suggest picking some up the next time you're in the grocery store. So I'm just gradually adding more flour as it becomes sticky. And then the way that you can tell if your dough is perfectly kneaded and ready to move on to rising is by performing the window pane test. I'm just going to take a little hunk of dough and the way that you can tell if it's perfectly kneaded and ready to move on is to actually stretch the dough out and you should be able to see through the dough and have it form a flexible web. So the dough has passed the window pane test and now I can put it into a separate bowl so it can rise and I can move on with the recipe. If you're a little intimidated about working with bread dough still, be sure to check out my ultimate simple dough recipe. It can be used to make anything from cinnamon rolls to sandwich bread and anything in between, and it's practically foolproof. So I'll go ahead and link to that below if you wanna give it a try. Thanks to Red Star Yeast for sponsoring this video. If you liked it, then be sure to check out all of my other bread recipes and bread baking videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.